Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Paramindful. I'm one of your co-hosts, Melba Collins, and over there is Alex the Werewolf. Alex, how are you doing today? I am living the dream. Relatable, relatable. Is it yep. a Freddy Krueger dream, per se? Very much so. Also yes. relatable. Uh, you're going to notice here that we're just down to two people right now. And unfortunately, we have had a lot of scheduling issues. As you can see, we've had a lot of EVPs coming up just because we've had a lot of scheduling problems. But you can still catch the sultry voice of the girl with the standard Carl Carafel on the Raw Watch Along um, happening on OLE every Monday along with Chris Best and OMD. You can also catch him on Tuesdays with Turnbuckle Talks. That being said, we're going to get into our topic a little bit today. We're talking Bermuda Triangle, the creepy, crappy place that our good friend Astro Pizarro lives pretty close to. But first, we're going to talk about our fun sponsor, Rogue Energy Drink. They're designed to be the ultimate energy drink for you with zero sugar, zero fillers, five calories, and packed with essential vitamins and minerals. Yes, I'm reading off a script. I don't care. That's what I got to do in this podcasting world. It is loaded with brain enhancing nootropics, which is a new word for me. I don't know what that means, but I'm going to assume that they're good for you. Good taste, good blending. It's not a grainy texture from what I've had from it, which is something great that I require with an energy drink. Energy and protein and hydration all available on Rogue Energy there. You can use our promo code OLEPODS to get 10% off. And we have a fun little video here that shows all of the fun flavors that they have available for you. I love that video. He's so bougie. It makes me feel fancy. It feels very, I was going to say metal, but not metal. It's like, it's heavy. I like it. It is. It is. It is. And again, you can get your rogue energy at rogueenergy.com. And if you use our promo code OLEPODS, you get 10% off your first order there. Alex. Yes. The Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda We're talking about triangle. that today. What are your experiences um, in regards to the Bermuda Triangle or, or what kind of drew you into the interest of the Bermuda Triangle? Um, well, I've been to Florida one time in my whole entire life. I went to clear <laughs> water and that's not in the Bermuda Triangle. Um, no. I no. did, however, see um, Hulk Hogan. He was riding a Vespa, like a scooter, when I was in Clearwater. So but that was a sight to see. <laughs> I have no way of proving that that happened, but... Well, hey, there's your little wrestling timbit of information today. Fun fact. That's right. Um, okay, so the first time I ever heard of the Bermuda Triangle was when I was like six or seven. I'd stumble upon some Discovery Channel show or whatever it was, and they were talking about something called Flight 19. And Flight 19 was, um, it was like a squadron of five, um, I got it right here. Five Grumman Avenger torpedo bombers, which Grumman, it, it doesn't matter. I know too much about airplanes and I won't bore you with it, but Grumman was a company and then they, they uh, like shipped it off to other companies to make the planes for them during the war. Anyways, so these torpedo bombers, they had 14 people ab aboard five planes. Um, yeah, they disappeared. They flew out on a mission. Uh, it was a training mission, I should I should clarify. And they disappeared. There was no sign of them ever again. There was no um, wreckage ever found, nothing. Now, I don't know if you want me to go into, like, detail right away or if you want to kind of ask questions. Oh. But I got, I'm fully loaded for a bear here with uh, cool stuff. 
Well, let's well, let's get into that real quick after, like, because with my experience with the Bermuda Triangle, I actually went to Bermuda um, okay. when I was, I believe, about nine years old. That kind of time of my life is a little f- fuzzy, obviously, because I was a child. But uh, um, you know the movie The Perfect Storm? Whenever you say Bermuda, I get the Beach Boys playing in my head. <laughs> That's <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> um, but you are my movie kind of trivia guy. You know the movie The Perfect Storm with George Clooney? Of course, yeah. I happened to go to Bermuda when that storm was ravaging the East Coast. Interesting. Yeah, not... Interesting. My parents have since gotten better at planning um, (laughs) trips, Um, but I unfortunately got trapped in Philadelphia for like three days with my dad with like only spring clothes, and it was like hailing and snowing. You're Canadian. You can handle it. I mean, we could handle that, but yeah. like, couldn't really like. It yeah. was just not particularly pleasant when we got to Bermuda, so it wasn't what I would consider the. Yeah, that best kind of sucks, eh? Time. Kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's a waste of a vacation, but it's kind of a waste of a vacation. It, it was certainly questionable, but yeah. but I did get introduced true. to the urban and or urban legend and myth of the Bermuda Triangle at this right. point, which you know, given the circumstances going down there, I definitely fed into my suspicion and paranoia of the area <laughs> i mean yeah i mean it, it so, makes sense with like storms and stuff that makes absolute sense as to why ships would go down and stuff but a hundred percent there 100 yeah. percent. after that point um i actually um was able to at this point i was going to the library a lot and renting movies and videos and stuff um so i actually started renting videos on the bermuda triangle and like hearing about all these strange happenings and occurrences happening in this area and immediately got terrified that I was brought to a place where I could have potentially died. So there's dad. Thanks dad. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks mom and dad. Um, But yeah, let's talk about some of the strange happenings that are happening around there so that our viewers can kind of, who don't know about the, the Bermuda triangle, maybe can get an understanding of the things that we're, we're talking about. So let's talk a little bit more detail about this flight 19 of yours, Alex. All right. So I wrote a little bit of an essay instead of point form. So it's going to sound very scripted and I apologize for that, but I'll try (laughs) to make it sound not scripted. Um, Like I said, five torpedo bombers, torpedo bombers are just planes that would have torpedoes on them and they'd fly low enough and then drop a torpedo into the water. And that would strike a sub or a, or um, a battleship or whatever. Right. So, this, uh, from my research, kind of sparked the, um, it was kind of like the catalyst for everybody knowing what the uh, Bermuda Triangle was because it was it was huge and it involved the military and the military is usually very good at um, finding things, you know, if they lose a ship or whatever, right? Yeah, so, they're good at finding things that should probably not be found. Yeah, yeah, aliens. Um, <laughs> okay, so there was a flight leader. His name was uh, Lieutenant Taylor, and he was um, like a professional. I shouldn't say professional. It sounds weird because they're all professionals technically. But for this type of plane, this type of torpedo bomber, he had logged over 2,500 flying hours. So that's not taxing. That's flying hours. That's hours in the sky working okay, these planes. so we would say he's like an experienced veteran very much so very much so um the remaining 13 people um so he was leading the squadron he was basically teaching them um it's something called dead reckoning i'll, I'll get into that in just a second sounds gnarly right sounds like a, a heavy actually i think that's a it's a megadeth song sorry um so yes the other um people in this flight squadron they had about 300 hours of flight time with this type of aircraft so i don't think i don't think it could be i mean i guess it could be pilot error but it's very difficult to have that many planes just disappear right anyways so what is not really well known about uh flight 19 is that all of the clocks in every one of the planes had been removed. Why? Still don't know why. But they didn't question anything because all pilots should be wearing a uh, wristwatch. 
and which plays into the dead reckoning. So let me move here all. So dead reckoning is, it's like a means of, it's like you do computational math with your watch and the direction you're going. And you basically try to figure out exactly where you are without the use of, of charts or, or maps, or I, I, there was no GPS at the time, but that kind of thing. Right. So it takes into account time, airspeed, distance and direction. Um, yeah. So it's solely by means of computations based on those things. There's nothing else. And the idea is say you were flying to an island, say uh Mel Ball Island, right? And you're like, okay, that island is, I, I actually wrote up an example here. So say you're cruising at, Okay. So these airplanes cruised at a speed of 215 miles per hour, which for us Kanakistan people, um, 346 kilometers an hour. They, that was their cruising speed. They could go faster, but that was the cruising speed. Now, um, if they were using landmarks such as islands and stuff, and they were 600 miles away, for example, what would happen if they were off a certain amount of degrees? So instead of flying dead north at zero degrees, say they were flying at, what did I use as an example here? Yeah, so say you were flying at 355 degrees, so just slightly northwest, just slightly. Over that distance, the problem with dead reckoning is that it's cumulative. So any sort of uh, miscalculation is exponentially bigger and bigger and bigger. So instead of flying straight, you're flying just slightly off, and then you'd end up, where we got here, 52.3 miles or 84 kilometers um, east southeast of the island you were looking for it's just it's bizarre it's like if you were to draw a straight line from point a to point b and then you take that straight line you just kind of wiggle it a little bit it's still going to be south and to the side so you'd never find where you're going and because of that every other calculation gets messed up so so what we're saying is that mel ball would not be an efficient pilot because she sucks at math because she can't tell time no it's it's she really can't it's it's quite um, I'm not going to say it's easy. It's not easy, but the, the theory is sound. If you run out of everything and you don't have GPS or whatever charts, whatever, this is a mm -hmm. sound tested method, but you have to be accurate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So in the, you would end up being, uh, what have we got here? Yeah. You'd end up being way off course. Mm -hmm. anyways, so we take that into consideration is what I said. Um, did they screw up their calculations? We don't know. The problem is they were still being contacted by the base, the air base, because they were just off the coast of Florida. Now, the contact between the squadron and the air base in Florida, they said, are you able to fly your way back? The report was, no, my compasses have failed so i did some diving some deep diving and there are two types of um, compasses well relative there could be more but there's two types that are specifically used in airplanes and back then there was something called a whiskey compass uh, which was a compass that was full of uh, an alcohol water mixture and what that would do is not allow it to freeze it would also allow it to like the perfect buoyancy everything so all these guys had these compasses there were two per plane all of them all of them stopped working which doesn't make sense to me because mm -hmm. i can keep one because with um whiskey compasses you had to fill up the alcohol and the water mixture if it were to evaporate or if there was a leak or whatever right throw out half of those that still leaves at least five i think compasses that should work but they didn't so hmm. it's very very interesting in in my mind because with compasses they also have to be calibrated so each one of these compasses were calibrated to uh what do they call it here a specific term uh, there's a deviation of up to 30 degrees, depending on where you are on the planet for these, um, uh, these compasses, these planes were in Florida and they were already compensated. So that means that they, there was a plus 7.98 degree on the, um, 
on the compass and they've accounted for that hmm. and they, they still all failed so it's very bizarre but mm -hmm. there's no documentation that i could find of these pilots topping up these um, compasses or <clears throat> anybody topping it up for that matter but i find it hard to believe that at least at least 10 minimum mm -hmm. of 10 compasses all fucked up so yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Especially when you like take into consideration, like this isn't the only flight that's had yes. something like this happen. There's the star tiger, the star aerial, the yeah. Douglas DC three yeah. that have just this, all just poof. This was just out of the, the air. The first super famous one. And yeah. I just find it like, yes, you could have calculations that are messed up, but would you have five airplanes that all disappeared. Like it's, mm -hmm. it, I could get one airplane and you don't find the wreckage. <laughs> MH370. <clears throat> um, sorry, that was that Malaysia Flight 370 that disappeared and it's very bizarre. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. There's five planes. If they were to ditch into the ocean, you're going to find something, whether it's a whatever, a floating notebook, at least, you know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's five planes worth of junk, right? And they know roughly where they were going to be, mm -hmm. right? So they're inside this triangle. So, yeah, and that was the point that I was going to make is like of all these planes that are major planes, some of them passenger planes, some of them, you know, transport planes, mm -hmm. you would hypothetically find something. And especially in the Bermuda waters, like that water is very clear. And especially when you start to get close to those clusters of like little islands and stuff, the water doesn't tend to be terribly deep. Yeah. And even if it is, it's clear enough that you can see wreckage from the air, even at higher points in in the water. So yeah. it's it's very interesting that these things just kind of disappear without a trace. Mm -hmm. And and with this one specifically, it says something that there's something wrong with the compasses. Yeah, um, it, it's it was recorded. It wasn't mm -hmm. just oh yeah, I heard him say that. It was recorded as him saying. I don't remember exactly verbatim what they said, but the base had messaged them. Are you able to uh, point yourself? Um, I think it was point yourself to whatever degree it was and make it back home. He says, I can't. My compasses have failed. Um, the interesting thing that I forgot to mention was during the investigation, the American military investigated, mm -hmm. they had discovered that it was not the fault of the pilots, which I find very interesting um because they would have to come up with a solution you know what i mean it doesn't make any sense yeah there would have to be a question answered somewhere along the way for right. them to figure and that out the way i look at it is like okay say the lieutenant the main the whatever the main pilot say his compasses fail he radios to the plane right beside him or uh, they have manual signals as well back in the day i mm -hmm. don't know what they do nowadays because they're flying fighter jets now Anyways, um, somebody had to have a compass that was working and you mm -hmm. could contact each other between. So that to me is enough to say nobody's compasses were working. Um, the interesting thing though, is I sat around for a while trying to figure out like what could have happened. And I ended up down this like deep rabbit hole of geomagnetic storms. I don't know if you ever heard of that stuff, but it's, uh, I mean, let, we, let's segue into that part of the conversation. Cause that's a whole different chunk <laughs> of what we were going to talk here. Yeah. Um, but um, before we kind of move into that, it, it, we also have to express, it's not just planes yes. that are disappearing and it's not just um, um, planes and like modern stuff that's been disappearing. There have been cases um, from what I could see that, on again on wikipedia 1880 yeah. was the first kind of time that i had heard recordings of things going missing in the bermuda triangle um many many ships are having the same problems i assume with the i assume with a compass problem or they're just ending up in this area and they're all disappearing and that's, You've got that's the, the thing hms there's... atlanta the uss cyclops the carol a deering Yes. But um, the Kana, I don't even know how to say this word, Kanamara 4, as well as the KC-135. Like, there's just so many 
cases. And again, it's it's the same situation where contact is lost or and they just disappear and nothing me. is found. That's the part that gets me is it's been around like it's people have known about the Bermuda Triangle for mm -hmm. a long time, but it became like this. I don't want to call it a worldwide phenomena thing, but it became famous because of Flight 19. Yeah. It, well, and especially when the military get involved. Right. And there's, there's, but there's like military ships that have disappeared. Yeah. And like cruise ship, I shouldn't say cruise ships because cruise ships, when you say it, it's like, oh, 3,000 people went missing. It wasn't mm -hmm. that thing. But um, I find it interesting that there's only one contact. You know what I mean? Like, oh, my compasses aren't working. Nobody's compasses are working. But then mm -hmm. everybody else just seems to just vanish, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. Um, there's well, also, like, in those videos that I had mentioned that I was watching when I was very young, they were like, um, reenactment videos of people right. on like 747s just right. flying around there and they happen to be in the triangle and whirlpools were opening up and yeah. stuff like that and they didn't disappear miraculously but it's like how many of those things are really happening how many things are maybe you know explainable so let's talk yeah. about these geostorms that you were just talking about because that was not something that came up on my list no geomagnetic storms um, I just want to mention one more. There was a guy who was flying a Cessna from one island to Florida, like to like mainland Florida, I should say. Okay. Um, he had made it like he was flying and this is like his, his account. So, I mean, you take it with a grain of salt, obviously. He said that the uh, clouds around his plane started acting funny and swirling. And then he just, he couldn't see anything. And then it was like, he said there was like flashing lights in the, um, uh, in the clouds, not like like light bulbs or anything, but like almost like lightning or electricity. Mm. He ended up making the flight that would normally have taken him, say, whatever, five hours or whatever it was. He made it there, I think it was like two hours earlier than he should have or than he oh. could, could have, which I find very funny, very strange. But like, mm -hmm. he doesn't know how it happened. Nobody has any idea how it happens. He, hmm. he had the time he took off and it's documented. He has the documented time when he landed in Florida and it was too short of a time for him to have made it because the plane didn't fly that fast. So, I mean, with the time thing, I, I don't, I, I can't offer an explanation right. for that, but the swirling winds and the lightning almost does sound a bit like a water spout, doesn't it? Well, I don't, I don't know what, like how high is that? Was. What that's called? Like a tornado on the water? Yeah, 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 but I don't know how how fast he was flying. I don't know all, like or how high yeah. he was flying. I should say, but like all the math that was done, like there's no possible way he could have made it here by then. And hmm. it's like, what the what the hell just happened, right? So Interesting. I think that's cool. So I'm thinking maybe like some sort of vortex or something. I don't know, but yes, geomagnetic storms. Mm -hmm. Um, geomagnetic geomagnetic storms is like a huge disturbance of the Earth's magnetosphere or magnetosphere whatever you want to pronounce it if you're british or whatever okay. um but it happens when there's a coronal mass ejection from the sun so the sun if you ever see videos of it kind of like exploding right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that sends out radiation and if it if it's aimed towards earth it can fry all, all our electronics and stuff like that however what happens is if they're directed towards Earth, like roughly around Earth, it changes the magnetic, um, I guess, makeup, I suppose. Oh, okay. So it has an effect on that. Okay. Yeah. So that's the only thing that I could, I could wrap my brain around as to why a compass would fail because mm -hmm. there's nothing electric in those compasses. Interesting. There's nothing electric. There's like a little bulb that's about it to light it up. Mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. nothing else. So... It's not like, oh, the whatever, the microchip fried and then the, you know, it's just mm -hmm, it always mm -hmm. points north or wherever, you know. And yeah, so I'm thinking maybe that's what happened because with a, a geomagnet, geomagnetic storm, the mm -hmm. compass would just starts spinning and spinning and spinning because it doesn't, it's trying to find something and it's finding magnetic forces everywhere. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So it's interesting though that it just seems to happen in this isolated yeah. area. Um, I mean, what do we think could be the cause of that? 
specifically because well, I had a list of stuff. I'm I'm of the opinion that um, there's more than one. Um, well, obviously, we know there's more than one triangle on the planet. Um, mm -hmm. I, I made an EVP about one, I think. Yes, the Alaskan one, yeah. That's right. Um, but I think there's probably more than one in the ocean somewhere, and we just kind of don't stumble upon it because it's not through regu like, regular flight paths or whatever, shipping channels or whatever. I mean, arguably the Pacific Ring. Sure. I have no idea what that is. I should probably Google it. <laughs> um, I think, though, like, I don't have an answer, obviously. If I had an answer, I'd probably be completely loaded and rich. But it's just strange how weird things happen in weird places. Because it's, it's such a bizarre mm -hmm. place. And, I mean... It doesn't necessarily have to be a triangle. Like there mm -hmm. could be there could be forty eight points in between. It could be a whatever a forty eight sided stop sign would be called. <laughs> you know, but it could be uh, the Bermuda octagon for all we know, right? Yeah, um, yeah. It just, just seems to happen in that kind of right, right triangulated I mean, area just, based on instances. Three, three points, right? And it's it's easier yeah, to yeah. list a, an island than it would be some random point in the ocean. So. Yeah, I mean, for well, I should also clarify, I believe it's from Florida to Bermuda and then from Bermuda to I want to say Cuba. And Puerto then, Rico is it Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. Thank you. And then Astrid will be disappointed in you, sir. Hey, man, I mentioned Florida. That's that's all. I have. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, according to what I saw, it was from Miami, specifically yeah. Miami, Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and then to um, uh, Bermuda and then Puerto Rico. Yeah. Um, now, there's been a lot of people, you know, speculating about stuff in the ocean, right. obviously, and there we have to touch on this a little bit. Um, a lot of people think that it could be um, remnants of an old ancient city, specifically Atlantis. Um, I, I've heard thoughts that people think that that it could be that the magnetic thing is um, caused by the old technology that the ancient Atlanteans kind of had and used because they were, you know, thought to be such um, a farther advanced right. um, kind of uh, group of people. Right. Do you think that there's probability to that? Um, I do. Um, I don't know how far I want to go into this one because, like, it, it could end up being another rabbit hole. <laughs> we will do Atlantis in its own right. Um, episode so just give away what you don't want to so, give away there no no no, that's totally fine so there's a place called bimini right uh, mm -hmm. which is down in the florida keys or whatever the hell it is mm -hmm. edgar casey a very famous um medium thank you um predicted a whole bunch of crazy things most of which came true um he also predicted that the edge of Atlantis would be found in either 1968 or 1969 off the coast of Bimini. And in 19, I think it was 1968, whatever, one of those years, they found a road that went from Bimini basically into the ocean and then disappeared. So that's credence enough for me to know that there's something there, but I don't know if it's Atlantis, but I mean, that would make a lot of sense if they were super advanced. You know, there, there's uh, the, it's limit, it, it's limitless. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. could be aliens firing uh, rockets for all we know, right? We don't know, you know? I mean, they need their own kind of bikini <laughs> island too, where they need right. to test out their weaponry and stuff. You know, maybe Bermuda Triangle was, was a former testing spot and, and this is the results. Yeah. Lingering I, results of that test. I think the Atlantis, um, the Atlantis thing is a great theory. Mm -hmm. um, there's also talks about like off the coast of Florida there being a like a UFO underwater base. Maybe that's mm -hmm. something you know. So yeah, that's true. I, I, like, I, I really have no answer. So kind of kind of weird. I mean, with Atlantis, it, it's it's another one. As I said, we'll have to do a whole thing on that independently because there's just so much lore and, and fascination and ideology behind where it is or where it potentially right. was based on 
because they did we, can, we can get into that at a later thing. Yeah. I I think that there's certainly something suspicious going on. I'm just trying to figure out if I feel like it is a a, a lingering thing from Atlantis or if it's potentially just a natural, a weirdly natural occurrence happening because of plate movement and, and the, the solar kind of yeah. stuff. I but it, again, it just seems so oddly suspicious that it's in such a concentrated area when it, hypothetically speaking, like I know our planet is con like made of different materials in different right. spots, but like, what about that specific right. small spot which would like, if you look at like us as like Jupiter, it'd be like the sun, that big right. storm that's always on Jupiter with that, that one focal summer, point. Yeah, and it's like oct uh, what octagonal or whatever that storm is. Sure, that's yeah, storm. it's like, yeah. but like what about our planet is making yeah. it, like is there a certain type of material that maybe just happened to be under there and now is causing, maybe it's a highly magnetic yeah. thing that we haven't investigated yet. Right. You know, because there, there doesn't seem to be i could be wrong about this but there doesn't seem to be from what i see as much wildlife in in those kind of waters do you get what i'm saying right. like there's not as much i've coral I've stuff never, fish yeah. i've never been there to be honest so i have no say in that but but even from like the videos that i've seen of them right. in that area when they have found certain wreckage and things right. it uh, doesn't right. seem like there's a lot of like i would expect to see growth Right. Of like some kind of something. Right. Like and there's water. just like if something went down in the 50s, I expect it to be pretty rusted and like have a lot of like almost its own ecosystem. And it just they don't. There's barely anything on it. Right. So it's like, is there something about that area that's making it not livable? Maybe. And maybe repelling things maybe is that a, a self-defense thing again is it a natural thing yeah. or is it an atlantis going get the heck out of our area i i tend to lean towards a geomagnetic storm however hmm. i also tend to believe that there are places on earth that are just weird whether it's hoyabashu which we've covered yeah or yeah. aokigahara forest in japan yeah or the alaskan triangle i just think that there's places where crazy shit happens because mm -hmm. energy is somehow focused there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and maybe that's maybe it's like a, a a conglomeration of many things maybe it's because it's such a weird place that maybe if the wind blows northwest and the waves are going this way or whatever somehow it makes the geomagnetic storm um mm -hmm. more powerful or whatever it is right I don't think we're ever going to really know, but I'd be very curious to know how many things are down there. You know, like sunk things. Mm -hmm. Lost mm -hmm. things, I should say. Yeah. Like that was another thing that I had thought about was, was um, currents, natural currents right. of the water, wind currents. Because we know how like the winds in Africa help grow the rainforests in South America. So... You know, is there something similar like that? The Gulf Coast is a, it's a janky area. So it, I, got, it, I have an example, um, actually just kind of dealing with that too. Okay. Um, there was a scientist who put forward a theory that because of plate tectonics, like the plates move and all that stuff and mm -hmm. the currents and everything, what, what's happening is a release of methane gas, which to me is a little bit strange because methane requires, um, rotting material, um, to be created um, or Did you say rotting material yes so like um, um they're like for example they're they're actually putting pipes and stuff into pig pens and things and just collecting the methane right but what they, they did some experiments and there's um they put like floating boats in water and everything and just released a bubble of methane mm. and because it's a different density it's lighter than air it's 0 0.6 times the um specific gravity of air so um, what had happened was the boats just ended up kind of like sinking and then the water would obviously take in the place as, as the methane went and it just kind of right down. So that was a, um, um, a sign. It would sink the ship. Yeah. So what would happen is, um, if it was in a perfect, whatever place, the boat was in the right place and the methane bubble was big enough. What happened was it would come around the ship and then because of that, 
it's just a bubble. So the ship would sink because it's a bubble. Like just if you were, um, um, whatever, to put a boat and then put a cup on top of it and push it down, the boat would still be there. But if you were to take away the cup really fast, the water kind of floods back in. Oh. So the boat is lower because of the methane bubble. And then as, because methane floats, it's mm -hmm. gone. And then the water just kind of fills back in, right? So your ship is there one minute and sunk the next. There's no time to call in like emergencies or whatever. It's just the water is just taken over, you know? So I could see that being, um, being, you know, to see people who don't know that, that being yeah. a very super natural kind right. of event to be seeing or a part of. Yeah. And again, um, for those who don't know, I work in the oil and gas industry. So I'm very familiar mm -hmm. with uh, methane, which is CH4, which is natural gas. Mm -hmm. I'm very, like, I understand how it works, but I don't get how it would come from the bottom of the ocean. That doesn't, I haven't quite figured that out yet. But again, I, I'm not a uh, geologist or whatever, seismologist or whoever the hell would look at what was inside the earth, right? So I don't really know. I have a theory, if okay. you'll indulge me. So you said it comes from rotting material? Yes. Well, What it... could be that big in the ocean? So I can explain that. Um, rotting? Well, in the ocean, I can't explain, but it doesn't just necessarily mean like animals and things. It's also vegetation, so... Well, and that's what I was just going to say. There's these all these legends and urban myths and stuff right. about creatures and things in the ocean. You know, what if something like Cthulhu was real? But what if he did? And he's just rotten down there and he's causing all kinds of problems <laughs> in Bermuda. His body farts are destroying ships. <laughs> I totally, I get exactly what you're saying. And to me that would make sense for boats and things mm -hmm. but again like i don't know what's inside the earth's core like mm -hmm. maybe there is methane i don't know uh, but what i do know is that there's something called electrolysis which is something you get done to your skin as well but basically it's running current through water and that current can be used uh, it basically separates the hydrogen and the oxygen out of the water so you can get hydrogen you can get oxygen now uh, for those who are curious, uh, Hawaii uses it to make synthetic natural gas. So my point being is, what if there is something under the water, and it's kind of like a, kind of like a, a release. Like M Mel and I would know. I don't know who's watching or where they're watching from, but lots of oil refineries, you'll see them burning at night, like out of a huge stack, and that's because mm -hmm. they're burning off excess. Um, it's basically a mess up. They're burning off the excess, um, trash effectively. Mm -hmm. And, um, what if something's under say a UFO base, for example, and that's just kind of like they're, oh, we just need to release some, whatever, you know, it's just completely random. So I don't know. Could also make sense. Lots of interesting theories coming out of what's sinking boats and downing <laughs> ships, but how would that down ships? Would methane be able to mess up ship or, um, um, airplanes. That's where I don't know. Now I know that um, the specifics of natural gas, they're similar to air, mm -hmm. um, obviously not breathable. It is non-toxic, however, um, unless you get into sour gas, but that's a different story. <laughs> I don't know how um, aircraft would react to a cloud of methane, like a methane release. I don't even know. if they, they would, it might not even have an impact on them. Yeah, but and, and again, like I could see maybe old school planes because they use like um, carburetors and things, and there's like open <laughs> fire that sometimes came out of the old uh, exhausts and stuff. I could see maybe like some kind of explosion or something, but it's but you would find the pieces of an explosion exactly, right? Exactly. But even if it just blew up their engine or whatever. You know, or it ran mm -hmm. uh, rich or lean one of the other ways and it just stalled. You're still mm -hmm. going to end up with that airplane in the water somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it's not going to hit the water softly. So, it's not going to stay together. No, yeah. That's true. That Lots is true. Things. 
lots of strange little theories that we have. So the last thing I wanted to to ask you about, Alex, um, do we think these strange happenings happening in this area, you said that they could be potentially an alien base. If Mm -hmm. that's the case, do you think that that's something that humanity is in some way exploiting? Um, Where to walk? Do I want men in black at my front door? (laughs) Yes. The answer is yes. If you're watching this, give me a shout. Um, I don't think so. I mm-hmm. am of the theory that the government knows what's going on, but the government, and I just mean governments in general. So whether it's the United States or Canada or whatever, mm-hmm. I think they know what's going on, but they can't control what's going on. It's basically like we're uh, here. So fucking much like the Sasquatch fuck. problem. Well, I mean, I feel like Sasquatch is a lot nicer, but you know, <laughs> I mean, but I think like when it comes to um unidentified aerial phenomena i think that the governments know but they can't do anything about it or there was some sort of agreement made many moons ago and they're too powerful for us to kind of like renege our Mm -hmm. you know so we don't know what's down there and i feel like if there is something down there why wouldn't they be able to exploit it i don't think we could though you know Mm -hmm. I have to agree. I have to agree with that. Cause like if they were like, obviously something pretty powerful is going on down there. I mean, these ships and these airplanes, they cost, they cost a lot to make and, and keep up yeah. and to have them just kind of suddenly yanked yeah, and like, you know, taken away. It's going to be a little frustrating. I, so I could imagine the that they would be part. at the very least trying to figure out what's going on, Yeah, but I, I equally don't part, think though. that they know how to, to handle it or how to right. deal with it. I think that's the scariest part is there's no SOSs. There's no, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? There's no flares. There's nothing. It's just they're there one minute and they're gone the next, you know, and that's. Which is also concerning how many more, like there's only so much, like there's so many things that we can find on disappearances, um, things going missing, all that stuff in this area. How many more that we don't even know about? That's the thing, right? How many um, more before written history? I made the cheeky comment about MH370 having disappeared. That's the thing is we don't know where that plane is, let alone every other plane that's ever been in the Bermuda, yeah. Bermuda Triangle. I mean, MH370 was in a different ocean, but my mm-hmm. point being is we don't know where that one is, and that one's mm-hmm. massive. That's a huge plane. Yeah. For those who don't know, uh, I believe that was a Boeing 777. It was either that or an Airbus A380. One of the biggest. It's a big the two, boy. They're the two biggest planes in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, commercial planes, I should specify. Mm-hmm. Passenger planes. Um, although I think the the Russians ended up blowing up the Antonov AN-225. So they might actually be the biggest plane left. So anyways. Yeah. It's not. It's not a small plane. It is not. So think about when we were kids, Mel, and we were flying whatever. I think the biggest plane around was like a 747. Mm-hmm. And now we have the Airbus A380 and the Boeing 777. And they're just like, the wingspan alone is just mind blasting. How it takes off from the ground, I don't know. Magic. <laughs> Science. So it's it's something really, really big to disappear. Mm-hmm. Just like a ship. <clears throat> I could get it if it's a canoe or like a yacht. But, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's bizarre. It is. And like, again, as I mentioned, how many of yachts, passenger planes, little things that were just the not as important things. to record or report, yeah. how many of those have disappeared also? Yeah, you know, I've and it, it I've been watching shows too um, back in the day where it's like they came across wreckage as they were exploring and they get the numbers and they don't know who they are. Yeah. They don't know where the plane was or where it was registered to. They can't find anything, which yeah. makes it even more or less suspicious. Here's the other How do you get an airplane in the sky, particularly in the sky and in the ocean, yeah. and you not have record of it existing? So That's here's space. the other creepy thing is when they do find some wreckage, for example, they said that they found the wing or a, a portion of the wing of MH370, for example. Mm. All the serial numbers were gone off of that plane, off of that portion of the wing, which doesn't make sense in my brain because there's more than one serial number on every single plane. Like every they would have to know where those serial numbers are. 
where did the serial number go? It didn't just fall off because if mm -hmm. that one fell off, there's one right, like four inches to the right. You know what I mean? They're mm -hmm. all gone. So don't be suspicious. Be, don't be suspicious. Be suspicious. I'd be very curious to know if maybe somewhere around the world that's like not really reported, if they're finding things, you know what I mean? Like, oh, we just found this fucking ghost ship. You know what I mean? Like, I'd be very curious mm -hmm. to know, like that. You know what I mean? I doubt it, but. I mean, on the African coast, aren't there several areas where you can find just the bones and remains of, of ships that have run aground and just yeah, washed up? But they also, they also bust ships there. So um, when, when companies are done with cruise ships, for example, they'll sell it. And what they do is they bring it to, I don't remember where, which specifically which com uh, country in Africa, but they'll run it uh, aground and then they'll just strip it from all the metal parts and stuff and they'll do whatever I think they, do they did that stuff. in Italy also, um, near yes. where I stayed yeah. when I went there in Povelia. Yeah. Ship, ship breakers are pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, it's the whole ship and it's just one guy just basically sails it into the, uh, into the coast and it grounds itself and then they just get to chopping her down. Yeah. Wow. So you'll, you'll find a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of weird things, but there's, there's lots of bizarre stuff like boats in the middle of the ocean or in the middle of the desert and stuff like that. It's very bizarre. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, they also just mysteries found, for yeah. another time. <laughs> a few years ago, they found a blue whale or I think it was a blue whale, maybe a sperm whale, whatever it was in the middle of the jungle. Like, how does that happen? Maybe it's the reverse. You know what I mean? It's taken from the ocean and sending it somewhere else. But I'll That say, does seem odd. Was it a, like a live one or was it the bone? It was dead, it was dead but they found it. It's like recently fleshy? passed. Yeah, fleshy. I'll, I'll send you the link. It's pretty interesting. That does sound pretty interesting. Yeah. But otherwise, it sounds like we have kind yeah. of come to the end yeah. of our discussion here. Alex, did you want to add anything else about the Bermuda Triangle real quick before we get out of here? Don't go there. Just <laughs> we'll have another video. We should leave Florida and then we'll just annex Florida to like, I don't know, somewhere else. Disney World. We'll just get rid of all of the coast of everything. We'll be <laughs> safe. We'll just deal with our big feet, big foots, um, and the incoming alien apocalypse that <laughs> is gonna happen soon. Save if, yourselves. Oh, if we don't go into the ocean, we don't have to worry about the Bermuda Triangle. Just saying. There you go. There you go. Oh, sharks. Come on, guys. Get us away. Yeah, I am not a fan of being eaten by sharks. That's yeah. just. No, thanks. Especially along that coast. There's too many bull sharks. Well, that being said, you can catch a mail ball during the week on Andre and Melbo's Wrestling Talks YouTube channel, where we drop two to three videos a week on NJPW and Stardom Wrestling. You can also catch me on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel, where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase, where we talk all things women's professional wrestling. You can follow Amel Ball. I, she got a link tree. Yay. She got a link tree, so Alex doesn't have to do so much work in his post. It is Linktree, so L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Melball Collins. And that's where you can find all of my socials, all of my stuff, everything that I'm doing for this amazing work thing online. Alex, you have significantly less stuff than I do, but where can the people find you and all the things that you were doing this week? I'm Wait Your Cannon on YouTube. I'm also Werewolf with the Movies on YouTube. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Uh, Ooh, got the uh, big deco. That's right. But yeah, I haven't been posting much there. I got a bunch of work stuff going on. So I've been pretty occupied. So. <laughs> and that being said, until we see you next time, I am your mobile. Over there is a werewolf. We will see you next time. Keep her spooky.